everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how to use fountain pens for sketching and I really enjoy this technique and like the possibilities this offers and that said if you enjoy this video then make sure to give it a like or subscribe to my channel. You can also share it with friends or on social media and if you want to support my work then you can also support me through Patreon by giving a donation and this will help me to make more free videos like this. Thanks so much and enjoy the video. I've shown a few times now how I like to combine fountain pens and watercolor for my sketching, but I haven't really talked about yet in a dedicated video, so I'd like to do this today. And you might have seen that fountain pens are popular with many sketches and there are many good reasons for this. So they're very portable, lightweight, they're also refillable, they're flexible and there's the expressiveness of the line work. And this is really the best reason for me to use them. I always prefer the line of a fountain pen over that of a fine liner or a technical pen. I don't know, it just I just prefer the lines I can create with these tools. Uh, of course, any pen or any tool is better than having no pen with you, but for some reason I just really, really like the lines that I can make with a fountain pen. And over the years I have accumulated a few different types of fountain pens. Here are some of my fountain pens. These are not all of them, I have to say, but they, they are, they, these are some that I use on a regular basis. You don't really need that many. You can do fine if you want to go sketching. You can just use one or two different pen pens. It entirely depends on you. Uh, I have developed sort of my own technique where I use a lot of colored inks for sketching. So um, I like to have several pens ready to go. So this is why I have a few more um, pens on average. But that said, uh, this doesn't have to be expensive either. I have never used really expensive fountain pens and I don't own a pen that has cost me more than say 25 euros or 25 dollars. One reason for this is that I'm just not prepared to spend a lot of money on tools that I might potentially lose, especially when I go field sketching. Uh, this has happened before, actually. I lost tools in the grass. You know, one thing that goes for these inexpensive models, that most of them, or actually all of them, are a joy to use. So they're really working great. And another thing besides drawing that I also use these fountain pens for is just using them for writing. I do most of my handwritten notes with fountain pens and I actually still have one antique model that I almost never use because it belonged to my grandma. Um, I can show you, it's in this little case here and it's actually a set together with a ballpoint pen which is also an interesting drawing tool. But yeah, this is the pen. And if you would like to learn more about this, this particular set, then uh, let me know and maybe I will make a video about it. So this is probably the most expensive pen that I own, although I never use it. And these are more looking like the fountain pens that I use on a regular basis. And if you follow other sketchers who use fountain pens, then you probably know these ones, but I will go through them one by one to show what I use them for. Let's start with this one here. This is a Lamy Safari. And this is a nice all-round German fountain pen that is very ergonomic to use. It has also a great price point. It's about 20 euros or 20 dollars. And let me just show you quickly what the writing looks like. I believe this is an F nib, so you can choose the nib of these, the nib size, uh, when you buy them. So they come in E, F, F, M, and I think a broad nib also. Uh, I personally like to use the finer nibs. And they give you a very nice ink flow with most inks and one little trick that I like to do from time to time is when I want an even finer line I simply turn the nib around so that gives you a very thin 
delicate line. So yeah, great to write with. Uh, they tend to dry out from time to time and can be slightly scratchy, particularly with the inks that I tend to use. And I will talk about uh, this in a minute, but they give you all in all a very nice line quality. So I'm really fond of these pens. Um, many Germans my age learned writing with these Lamy pens. They still have one model with which is this um, cute wooden model. It's, it's a bit shorter than these ones and they are for grade schoolers especially. Uh, I'm not sure if children these days still use fountain pens in school, but I have very fond memories about these uh, particular pens. The next type of pen I want to talk about is the Japanese model. It's a platinum preppy and these are fountain pens that you can buy with wonderfully thin EF nibs if you're lucky. So they come in a few different sizes. I have an F nib here and an EF nib and again I'm just going to show you what this looks like. So the ink flow for these is very nice too and it's very soft feel. Again you can also turn it around to get even thinner lines. And as you can see the F nib for the preppy is almost the same as the Safari F nib and then if we take a look at the E F nib it's even a bit thinner so if you want really fine, delicate lines, then you might want to go with the EF nib. It's slightly more scratchy and if you turn it around, you can get these really, really thin lines. Yeah, so this is the preppy EF. So as you can see, the F nib is really still pretty great. It's really fine. Uh, one thing about these pens is that the plastic looks a bit flimsy and feels a bit cheap, but at a price point of eight euros, you, I think you simply can't go wrong with them. Uh, for me, they have proven to be nearly indestructible so far. <laughs> uh, they almost never dry out when the cap is on, so I don't have any problems reactivating them as I sometimes have with the Lamy pens. So I have really quite a lot of those little pens in all kinds of colors. So um, let me just show you that I have one in pink and one in yellow and I don't need those particular colors very often but when I do I simply you know try them out and sometimes they don't reactivate like this one right now. And what I do then is I take a soft cloth just rub it slightly and swipe it a bit and then usually it comes right back. So this is something that I really like about these small pens. And again, I think they're just really great to use and nearly indestructible. And here we have the Kaweco Sport pens. This is maybe my favorite model of them all for simply for the handling and for the line drawing quality and also for the design. This is a German fountain pen and I think it's just impossibly cute. I mean look at this, it's only 13 centimeters, it's even smaller than the preppy pen and yeah the ink flow on these ones is really great. Um, if you open it you can use the cap as an extender so um, it's a bit short if you hold it like that. But if you add the cap back on top, then you don't lose it and it actually um, handles really well that way. So this one here is an EF nib and it's a bit thicker than the preppy or right around the same size as a preppy, a bit thinner than the Lamy. Again, you can turn this around. This doesn't work too well with the ink that I have in here, but they give you great line quality too. I am really, really enjoy drawing with these pens and maybe it's also because of the, the really nice design they have. These pens cost around 20 euro. Um, one possible downside is that they have a slightly smaller ink capacity, but this I have to say has never been a problem for me. So they have these smaller cartridges or actually this is a converter, but 
Um, yeah, so they only have a small capacity for ink, um, smaller than the preppies or the Lamy pens, which have sort of these bigger cartridges inside. But still, these are my main drawing tools these days, along with the preppy pens. So I have very little negative to say about these little pens. And another kind of pen that I'd like to show you is this one. This is the Twisby Go. And this is a bit different because it uses a push mechanism to refill. So there's no cartridge, there's no uh, converter for this one. Um, you just push it and put it inside an ink container and then it refills. And as you can see, it has quite the large ink tank inside. And I use this one with water-soluble fountain pen ink for writing because I can't really clean the inner parts of this, so I want to take any risks. And it doesn't say what kind of nib this is. I suppose it's an F nib. Uh, you can see it's a bit broader than the others. But I really like the flow of ink and I suppose you could also draw with it. Of course, it's not, this ink is not waterproof, but it still handles really nicely. It's a bit thicker than the other pens, but it's really nice. The only thing that I don't like is uh, the cap. <laughs> I keep misplacing it and it, I keep dropping it because it doesn't really have a clip. So this is maybe one design element that could be changed about this pen. But apart from this, I think it's really beautiful, really great to use. And as you might have noticed, I like to equip my pens with EF or F nibs. It's very fine overall. Uh, you can usually choose this when you buy the pen. For most pens, you can also exchange the nib. So um, you simply um, if you buy a new nib for the pen, you simply um, pull it off and then put the new nib on. So this is usually possible with any kind of fountain pen or most kinds of fountain pens. And I just prefer these fine lines over bold expressive lines. Uh, I also can get bolder lines from brushes if I need to or if I want to. And this means it can sometimes be hard to keep the ink flowing well as you saw for some of these um, fountain pens it can be tougher to activate them but I have to say I accept these trade-offs for the really fine lines that I can get out of them and all of these fountain pen models except for the Twisby Go can be equipped with converters I've shown you the converter for the Kaweco pen and here would be a converter for a Lamy pen and let's put a cartridge next to it. And usually those converters will have slightly less capacity than cartridges because they need to include this mechanism here. And usually you will just um, put the tip of the pen into the ink container and then fill up the converter that way. And an alternative to using um, converters could be to refill a cartridge with a syringe. And I like to get these uh, slightly thicker blunt syringes that, so that I don't hurt myself when I use them and you would simply put this into the ink container and then uh, apply the ink into the empty cartridge or into the converter if you like. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about the kind of inks that I use in my fountain pens for uh, drawing purposes. So for fountain pens you need to be a bit picky with your inks and either you choose these sort of dye-based fountain pen inks like school inks and those are usually non-waterproof and they are also prone to fade and I only use these kind of inks for taking notes and you can see what happens with these inks when you add water over them. So I said in my Twisby Go I had one of these inks, which is a nice green ink, but you see it reactivates when I add water on top. And also in my Lamy pen I have this nice black ink, which also reactivates when I add water. So you can get really interesting effects for this too, but if you want to add watercolor over your line work, then this isn't as desirable. So I like to use these inks that are waterproof when they're dry. And so this means I can go over them with really a lot of water and they won't reactivate. And this is a really cool thing, I think. 
and on top of that you can use them in a fountain pen. So there are lots of inks like these acrylic based drawing inks that you wouldn't be able to use in a fountain pen and this is because they will just clog the, the insides of the fountain pen. So um, if you have acrylic ink or shellac based ink please don't put this in fountain pens because it will just ruin the pen. And you can still use this with these kind of dip nibs, they're great for that. But for fountain pens you need something a little bit different. And this is where these waterproof fountain pen inks come into play. And fortunately there are a few companies who make these waterproof inks for fountain pens and these have very fine pigments. I think the marketing term is nano pigments. And so yeah, this company here is Rohrer and Klingner. It's another German company. Um, their product is called Sketch Ink. It comes in a lot of colors, it has a great flow, it's very easy to obtain for me and it's not as expensive as some of the other waterproof fountain pen inks out there. So there's another company called Deatramentis and I also I only have these small vials of their ink because it's really expensive. I, I, I'm not sure why but it's just the way it is. Um, one container of this sketch ink costs around 8 euros right now in Germany for me. So I think and, and one container really goes a long way. And so yeah these inks can also be mixed with each other so they come in quite a few interesting colors. Um, greens and reds and interesting darker tones. So yeah, they, I also have tried thinning them a little bit with water for more subdued colors, which I find really interesting for sketching. You can see, um, I think I did this here with a green to make it a, a little less vibrant. And yeah, thinning the inks makes them a bit harder to draw with because the ink flow is reduced. But I think, well, you have to experiment a little bit with these kind of inks. But overall, I find these are really great inks for sketching. And um, yeah, I'm happy that manufacturers have found this kind of niche and are catering to those of us who want to sketch with ink but still add watercolor and have the flexibility to do this with fountain pens. So let's talk about the pros and cons. <laughs> what do I like about this approach? Overall, I really, really love the color range and the possibility that these inks give me for field sketching. Um, fountain pens mean that I can take the inks everywhere with me without needing to resort to messy dip nibs. And I can take several colors with me too. And I love being able to add watercolor over my line work. If you've seen any of my sketchbook tours or any of the um, other tutorials that I shared on this channel in the last year, then you will see that I've really used this technique a lot recently. And I'm just, I just love it. <laughs> uh, I very much like the handling and the feel of fountain pens. It's almost the same as using a dip nib. It has a little bit of flexibility and you know, you can um, change the um, thickness of the line and the expressiveness of these lines is really amazing and I think it's much much more interesting than using a fine liner. At least for me it, it's really how I like to work. And these are also tools that will last me for several years. They are refillable and unlike most fine liners, you can use them a lot of times. You know, you buy this once and then you can refill it all of the time. If you need to replace your nib, you can even do this. Uh, a few things that I dislike about this system is that occasionally, as I've said, the inks in fountain pens can dry a little bit, then it's hard to get them started again without giving them a good clean. And especially with these waterproof fountain pen inks, they still are pigmented inks so this means they can form these kind of weird sediments and they can dry a bit easier in your pen so you have to take care of your fountain pen uh, a bit more regularly and either you use all of your fountain pens on a regular basis or you will have to spend time to reactivate them and generally I have found that the preppy pens and the Kaweco pens stay active and writable longer than these Lamy pens 
And this is why I have relegated all my Lamy pens to water-soluble ink now. Uh, I, I just find they're easier to work with when I use them with this, with this other kind of ink. And all of that said, I still give all my pens a pretty good cleaning from time to time. So I soak them, I take them apart, soak them completely in water or um, run them through with pen cleaner. Uh, so that's just a little bit more maintenance than with fine liners or even with these dip nib pens. And yeah, it's just something that I still really prefer to having the hassle of taking these small vials on with me on field trips or just having the opportunity to use um, throwaway fine liners. And so far I haven't ruined a fountain pen with those waterproof inks. You can, with some inks, you can definitely see the sediment, the, those where those pigments sort of settle and leave traces in the feed mechanism. Um, I have one of them here. So this was a transparent fountain pen. And here is the converter and you can see there are still traces of this. I think it was a red ink that I had in here. So it leaves its traces, but I cleaned it and it's it's really fine to go. It really, um, the ink flow is not reduced or anything. So all in all, for me, ink is a really great medium that I'm happy to have discovered and have added to my toolkit and I would love to hear from you what do you use ink do you use pens at all for your drawing or do you simply use pencils do you do mixed media at all and have you tried fountain pens or um, do you prefer them or do you like regular pens better I'd really like to, to hear from you uh, in the comments <laughs> So this is all from me today. This is how I use colored inks and fountain pens for my sketching. And if you enjoyed this video, one way to say thanks is by clicking the like button. And to be notified about new videos from me, be sure to subscribe to my channel. You can also support me and my work on Patreon or through Gumroad or through purchasing a course. And it's your support that makes these videos possible. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye.